Almost. It's like the first years of disc brakes where the Jaguars at the end of the straight seem to have the advantage, don't they? He's done it. Look, he's got him back. On the same straight, on the one run, yes. Do you remember the Jaguars when they first had disc brakes? They used to glow in the night. Yes. Before they learned how to keep them cool. Well, now, of course, they make them out of um, carbon material and things like that, so they equally glow now, in fact, you can see them. But, but it's an example of how racing improves the automotive engineering product for the street. Oh, yes, because it's played its huge part in Le Mans, as we'll let have time to talk about with virtually every part that breaks, of course, very significant, and engine management systems and... Fuel injection years ago. Yep. And, of course, equally important, just the plain metallurgy. Is this going on again? Well, the this Porsche is goes a... back in the lead again. This is supposed to be a 24-hour race. Well, they can be very, very proud back home of Andy Wallace in his debut race at Le Mans here, fighting it out with Porsche in his first stint in the car and getting himself caught up a bit more with the back marker, I think, perhaps, than uh, Van der Merve did. Yes, then. he was a little bit unlucky in the lapping there. Oh, that doesn't look very nice. That looks like uh, a car that's jumped the barrier and caught fire, number 30. That's one of the Cougars, isn't it? Yes, that's the Courage Cougar, the Francois Amigo uh, Belmondo car, and Yoshi Katayama, the uh, Japanese driver. And there's another one off there. That's number 37, which is one, one of, of the, the Toyotas. Yeah, that's the British, uh, at least one British driver in among them there. Looks like uh, he's spinning his wheels in the dirt. He can't get it going. Yes, Tiffany Dell's one of the crew of that. Yes, Tough Noodle, as he's known to one or two of his uh, <laughs> friends. Very experienced in a very wide range of racing and also broadcasting, Tiffany Dell. Yeah, he's in an awkward place there because if he backs off, it's going to be worse, isn't it? It's back inside the Jaguar again. This is the uh, John Watson Ori Pescarolo car. And that is another works Porsche stop. Can't see which one it is from the back here. It looks like an Andretti one to me. That's various members of the Andretti family swapping places. That's number 19. It's an interesting... Uh idea in fact driving with your son and your nephew i think i wouldn't have any sleep at all if i was worried about driving with my son and my nephew well it's something he's very very much wanted to achieve as a family win he said to me some years ago after he'd won the world championship won in annapolis he won all the american championships he'd won so much and i said to him mario is there anything left anything you really want to do before you pack it he said yes i want to win le mans with my son can, well, he do, can he do it this time? He's not all that pl well placed at the moment, but there's a long time yet. The big beauty of Le Mans is things like that fairground that we've just seen there, which everybody goes and visits. It's, it, it's a special day out, Anthony, isn't it? It's something yeah. like no other motor race. I think the fun fair and the frolic in the forest is part of it. A lot of people may not be tremendous racing enthusiasts, but this is a happening. If they are racing enthusiasts, very often it pulls a bit, the race settles down, it this time doesn't look like doing it, but very often it does. But going back to what you were saying, I think to win Le Mans is extremely important for a big manufacturer. At Jaguar last year, 1987, they won the championship, but they didn't win here. And I think it's a tremendous challenge to them to win here again after 21 years. The commercial payoff for a team that wins Le Mans the manufacturer's team is tremendous, and I'm sure they want that. They got a great deal out of winning the championship, but I think Le Mans is a very, very special thing to win. You can see now that night is falling. The lights are coming into their own slowly but surely on the far side of the circuit out here. You've just got the lights of the cars, and they come into this brightly lit pit area, flash through it, just like a flash, and this, of course, goes on all night. And a lot of the spectators, in fact, are staying to watch this battle. But now some of them move away into Le Mans itself to the hundreds of little catering sites around the circuit where you can get, in fact, some extremely good food, I should tell you. There is, of course, the normal hospitality now that goes on at large motor race meetings with most of the teams and many of the trade sponsors having hospitality units here, serving hundreds and thousands of meals to people. And there's the fairground, as we've said. There's a church service even in the morning. The whole of Le Mans is geared. It's almost like a village that comes alive once every year for the 24 hours. And you see there, they've changed the nose cone on the front of that number 17 Porsche. I wonder whether he's been off somewhere. Well, we have just heard, in fact, that he did touch the back of another car, and that's the reason why. Uh, but you can see both lights are working where they weren't when he came into the pit. So that's the reason for that stop. 
it would have delayed him but little. And now we've got an infrared picture. This again is technology moving into the 20th century, the latter half. This is what they see through infrared sights. But this is an infrared picture of a car going around Le Mans. We can actually pick up the car, we can't pick up the number, but it's quite a contrast with the normal sort of night shots that we have at Le Mans. And here's one of those as we've got coming into the pits. One of the Jaguars, number one, the Martin Brundle John Nielsen car. It looks as though Nielsen is about to take over from Brundle. So a change of driver for the number one Jaguar. This is the one driven by just two people. It's not leading the race, it's up there now. And of course, if the Jaguars get into a fighting, a strong fighting position, they will tend to drive this race as something of a team race. It was the one that was really intended, I think, to win if all things were equal. We're in the lead now. Literally at midnight, number 18 Porsche, that's the Bob Wallach, the Sarrell van der Merwe, Vern Schuppen car in second place, Jaguar number two, Andy Wallace, Jan Lammers, Johnny Dumfries in third place, Porsche number 17, who's come up from that delay that we saw, the Stuck Bell Ludwig car, the one that went out of petrol, then number 21 Jaguar, the first of the American cars, Sullivan, Jones and Price Cobb, then number one Jaguar, that's the Brundle Nielsen car, that was the other one that was delayed. Then number 19, the Andretti's Porsche, the Andretti family. And number 8 Porsche, the first of the non-works cars, one of the Yost Racing, the Blaupunkt Yost Racing cars. And then finally the next Jaguar, the number 22 Jaguar, the Silk Cut car. Sadly missing, the number 3 car, the Pescarello Ralbazel John Watson car, that has stopped out on the circuit with what we are told is a transmission problem. But that's one Jaguar out, four Jaguars still in, still the three Porsches in. And one of the Jaguars in now, having more than I would say routine maintenance at this point. Yes, that looks like a problem. It's difficult to see exactly what they're doing. Of course, it is most unusual at Le Mans for what we used to call the Le Mans two-hour Grand Prix to go on so long. These cars are still racing mostly on the same lap, or give or take a pit stop or two, and they're locked in combat just like a Grand Prix, and as you say, the race is nine hours old. Nine hours old. Well, it's 8 a.m. in the morning now and the position has changed a little during the night. It's changed because one Porsche is out, number 18 Porsche, and the number 19 car has dropped back with an engine problem. But Jaguars currently are leading the race with the number two car, the pace setter, and then behind them, having made up for all that lost time, number 17 Porsche, that's the Derek Bell, Hans Took, Klaus Ludwig car is up to second place, and the number one Jaguar is up to third place as the tired spectators, some of them who have stayed by the trackside, not bothered to get up to go to those services we talked about, watch the number one car, the Martin Brandl, John Nielsen car, come past the pit area here, which is now beginning to fill up again. People coming back to the circuit. Windscreens you will see cleaned or are, in fact, using the metal there to stop them misting up on the inside. I thought we got a crack there because one of the Jaguars this morning did have a windscreen change. Yes, it did. And I tell you what, there's some problems in the Porsche team. The 18 cars went, as you say, and I think it was something to do with the cooling system. And the Andrettis have been very badly delayed. There's bits of car flying all over the place there. I don't know what that was. That's a Jaguar, and that, I think, was a tyre going on it. There's a ja Jaguar there that's had a tyre go. So a dramatic moment for Jaguar, and we didn't see or were able to pick up then exactly which Jaguar that was. There's the number two car going through, the leading car, so it wasn't that. But one of the Jaguars has had a tyre go. It's the number one car. It's the number it's one Nielsen car. It's Nielsen or Brundle. I think it's Nielsen coming in very slowly, as you say, with a blown tyre. But the Porsches, the Andrettis, have got intercooling problems as well, and they've dropped back to about seventh or eighth places. Place, and I think Porsches are worried that this epidemic might attack their current front runner, number 17, which, of course, is the original Stuck Bell Ludwig car. Because, of course, Bell would love to bring this home and, e and, and equal Jackie X's all-time record. But meanwhile, the Jaguars are going strongly, although number 22 has the second of the American cars is way, way back. No, number 21, I correct. Number 21 is way, way back down in 20 something place. They've had transmission problems, which are roughly similar to what uh, has been holding back the number one car on and off. Yes, the number 22 car, in fact, Anthony, you were right there, it had been quite a long way back. It's been driven at a much slower pace, in fact, than the other Jaguars, but it is now beginning to make its presence felt. 
Jaguars have not had things all their own way, although they've been the most numerous of cars. The number eight Porsche you see there, that's the Yoast car. That is in fourth place at the moment. Here's the number Up front, that car there, number two, leads the Le Mans race for 1988, ahead of the number 17 Porsche of the great Le Mans experts, Stuck, Bell and Ludwig. You could hardly have a hotter Le Mans team than that lot. Now, on, on paper, they've got all the experience, and if you look at Dumfries, or you look for that matter at Andy Wallace, they haven't really got the experience of Le Mans. You mustn't count your cats before the kittens are hatched or whatever you say but if they win what a great thing for those two drivers particularly I mean Jan Lammers hasn't won them all either but he has won a lot of races those two Dumfries and Wallace at the beginning end of their careers what a great thing for them well it's very important in fact I think for Wallace who's about to make his move into 3000 here comes the Jaguar number two in the pits and this must be just a final top-up, unless a, it's a problem. Yeah, final top-up. Yes, who's going to have the A honour, B burden of responsibility of bringing it in? I think it'll probably be Jan Lammers. He started the car, and I suspect he'll finish the car. Certainly the most experienced, the senior member of that group, that team. Meanwhile, the Porsche goes on its way, catching up, catching up all the time, the Jags in the pits, which wasn't long, just a final top-up, not a full pit stop. Maybe not much more than a driver change to put Lammers back in the car. So that comes number two. You can hear the cheer of the crowd there, the huge mass of crowd that have come back, those people who have travelled back during the course of the morning. Some stayed in a hotel, some stayed late in the cars. It's all part of this wonderful atmosphere of Le Mans. And the beautiful part about it is, of course, the traffic of Le Mans all disposes of itself as the Jaguars now are beginning to collect themselves together for a team-type finish. What, how great it would be if they managed, if they had the spare time, as it were, in hand over the Porsche, to line themselves up for a three-car finish, because there are three still going. As we know, number 21 Jaguar is well back in the field, but if they could somehow get themselves into line, the radio control and one thing and another, and come over the line together, how great that would be. But there's still time for things to go wrong before that happens. While I'm looking, we've got two of them running together now. The first and fourth place car, the fourth place car, uh, interesting in that it has among its drivers Larry Perkins, the Australian driver, who is representing TWR in his other hat because they are busily preparing not only to race with Jaguars but also with Holden's, the Australian car, again part of TWR's 
uh, business for the years. And you can hear the cheers of the crowd and the waves of the flags as they come past the bits. And this is happening every lap. They're cheering them on towards victory. The atmosphere's building up now. This is building to be the the finish of a very fine Grand Prix, about 12 minutes to go only, about 12 minutes to go. You've got two of the Jaguars in line. Unless something goes wrong, the Porsche can't possibly catch them now. He's just got too much of a deficit. He kept getting off the lap when he stopped the, the pits and then the Jaguar stopped and he got back on the lap, but he couldn't make it up. So if this number two car keeps rolling as it is now, it's going to win. And it's got its number 22 teammate in fourth place behind it, the number 21 car, much further back, but three Jaguars still going. Uh, the question is whether they now can find the other one and get it lined up for a three-car finish. Fourth place behind it, the number 21 car, much further back, but three Jaguars still going. Uh, the question is whether they now can find the other one and get it lined up for a three-car finish. Yes, it's a question really of surviving this last, what, three laps or so, something like that, because one problem, it's still only seconds, and it's a real, oh, I don't know, curl the toes, the fingers, the lot, a jittery moment for everybody here. We're waiting to see whether or not this historic win can happen at Le Mans. And cars have run out of fuel in the last stages before now. I think he's going to win. I think he's going to do it. But we mustn't be too optimistic. You can so easily talk yourself into a state of joy, which is then taken from you. Two Jaguars running together, nose and tail. I don't know whether they'll actually manage to find the third one on the road in these final stages. Great or funny. is that it behind? Great fun if they did. I think that might be the car behind, in fact, Anthony. I think you'll find that the three Jaguars have lined up. So it shows that whatever was the wrong with the uh, American Jaguar that slowed, it's caught up again. It's going as well as ever. And all three cars now sounding healthy, sounding in... ...fifth Jaguar and Tom Walkinshaw have been able to keep that promise that they made when they first competed three years ago. But they've got them together in first, fourth and sixteenth places, numbers 2, 22 and 21. Dine ahead, the English section of the crowd at least, which is a very large section, going absolutely raving spare now with excitement. It's what they came to see, what they hoped to see last year and they didn't. Jaguar are not going to be the, the disappointing factor now at Le Mans. They're all waving the flags. Look at the marshals waving all the flags as they come round to the finish. This is a race, incidentally, which stops right at the finish. There's no question of cooling off flags, because the crowd simply swarm all over the track as soon as the chequered flag comes out. They, if they miss a lap, if they miss going over before three o'clock, they have to go round again. And the marshals know, the crowd know, the drivers must know it's just minutes to go now before the end of the 1988 Le Mans 24-hour race and Jaguars in line-ahead formation are making their way down the Mulsanne Strait for what will probably be the last time in this historic effort towards victory for 1988. They would certainly want to make it the last time. They wouldn't want, as I say, to cross over the line, say, at one minute or 40 seconds before three o'clock, then they have to go all the way around again and the risk of things going wrong again. The marshals out there waving vigorously to the three Jaguar drivers. Jaguar, a very popular name, of course, at Le Mans, and it's been a long time since they gave their supporters this success. They're the pit signaling at Mulsanne. Champagne already in the pit signaling area. Well, they've decided that Jaguar have won. The crowd have decided that Jaguar have won. And I think even now, Sir John Egan, who's been here to watch this race, to provide encouragement for the team throughout, has decided that at last this victory has come true. For him, for Tom Walkinshaw, and all the team who've been competing here at Le Mans, it looks as if they've done the job. And of course, there's a big, big party of Jaguar guests here who've come to see just this. There's the second place car. Don't forget that the number 17 Porsche of Stuck, Bell and Ludwig is still in second place and uncatchable. And in third place is the Reinhold Just Porsche, number eight of Winter, Jelinski and Dickens. So that although Jaguars have won, Porsches have got second and third.
Yes, by no means a walkover for Jack Yaw, but I don't think they would have wanted it any other way, would they, Anthony? No, you don't want to... If, it, if you do that, it looks too easy. This has been hard, very difficult to do, and they've done it, and that's very important. The helicopter shot overhead as we look down, going to a camera. Still fairly high up, watching the cars, watching the marshals as they come round, and is this going to be it? Is this going to be the last lap of the 1988 Le Mans 24-hour race? It looks to me as if they might be a little bit premature, but we'll have to wait and see. All the flags are going, the crowd are surging forward, they've climbed what appeared to me to be impregnable barriers to get across the road, and it's only when we come into the pit area here that we'll see whether or not that massive crowd are going to mean that this is the last lap of Le Mans as the Jaguars come into There's the pit area. Flag. Checkered flag, they've done it. Jaguars have won the 1988 Le Mans 24 hour race which they set out to do and they've brought great joy to the huge British contingent in this vast crowd. Many, many people have come over, we're told 50,000 British spectators here amongst the enormous crowd of French spectators and German and Italians and everyone else, a lot of American people here too, but I think it's fair to say this is a win for the Brits and they're going to enjoy it. They're flooding the track, the cars of course have to be stopped, nobody can go round again, the cars coming in behind the Jaguars have got to be stopped so they don't rush into the crowd but it's a great achievement and will bring great prestige to the name of jaguar they tried the last two years but they didn't make it this time they've done it and that number two car lammers dumfries and wallace has led far and away the majority of the laps of the race this year we saw our last shot of the straight there Uh, it's always been a little bit of entente cordiale here and if uh, they can't win themselves I think they'd as soon as see the British win as anybody because it has been years of Porsche domination but a marvellous drive by this car with of course Derek Bell, Klausenvik, Handstock putting up a tremendous battle. This was no walkover victory here at Le Mans in 1988 for Jaguar. It was against Porsche who had devoted the whole of a year to preparing for this race. And now the question is, with 1988 won and in the bag, can they come back and do it again at Le Mans? Because for all the Jaguar fans, for the fans of the world prototype sports racing, 